Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm Ellie Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. Take a look at these markets from a neoclassical perspective, looking at supply and demand on the charts, asking ourselves, what does it tell us about the coming days? We do the show time four times a week, Monday through Thursday, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube and under the channel LA Little. If you haven't subscribed to the show and you want to, just reach out in the right hand corner, do so on the YouTube screen. Anytime I push content, uh, you'll get a notification. As far as what happened today, um, it was another up day overall. Nice big up day, actually. We're going to come back to these. Uh, these were kind of interesting today. Um, the shippers. Um, I just want to show you some of the wild things that are starting to go on. But if we look at the numbers here, hey, here we go. Uh, what we got here is um, you know a nice big push up. Uh, on the NASDAQ, the NDX, so forth, right? Uh, so you, you had a lot of selling in the NDX. Uh, you get a push back up. The Russell takes a break. You get the push in the NASDAQ, 1.1%. And, uh, and then elsewhere, here's the S&P up 0.75. So a push back up. Large, uh, large cap technology also was up uh, more than that. Uh, Dow was flat, right? 0.29. So you, the things that led now take a break the things that trailed now start to push right so so you take a break here you take a break there what do you do you start pushing on the s p you start pushing on the nasdaq you get a reversal in your bonds even gold gets a little reversal so all this stuff kind of makes sense when you think about it from that perspective uh, that is what's going on here right and that's very positive if you want to be long this market because what it's telling you is that this uh, money is uh, just rotating around into things that quote unquote look cheap now and those things that are strong haven't sold off and so they're going to try to take a rest at these highs before they pick up and start moving again let's look at the indexes so here's the the s p 500 now one thing that we've talked about before is for for this to really get going, it's got to get over this range. Well, it cleared it today. And now you're taking out swing point highs. You're going to get a, a green arrow uh, back up this way tomorrow. And all you got to do now is go after your highs, and that's what this wants to do. Now, there is the potential that you get over this and fail that test, right? That's where the volume is. So you could do a test failure there, fall back, right, and build out some sort of a range before you go higher. But but right now, it looks to me like they are going to test that. If they get over it, stay over it tomorrow, they're going back to the highs. That's the S&P. If we look at the NASDAQ, on the NASDAQ, the broad composite, uh, you're pushing back up. You're coming back up towards the highs. Now, the NASDAQ, just like the S&P 500, has one of those bars. That bar is up here towards the top, uh, back when this guy was, was the leader instead of the laggard. Uh, but that's where it's going to try to go. It's got the same test coming up tomorrow here as you see on the S&P. If you want to watch for a failure, you watch the weaker ones. And so you look at the NASDAQ and you say, does it fail at that price point? If it does, then that potentially uh, pulls the other ones back in uh, with it. NDX. Now the large cap technology got sold off hard. Um, it's kind of a strange volume. That's not really true, but uh, we'll have to correct it. Uh, the, the large cap, right, they sold off hard on the Trump news. And so you ended up coming all the way back down. Now you're trying to climb back up. And again, as this one comes up, what it's going to do is a bearish retest regenerate. And that's going to be off the swing point low that it closed under. And since you come back within six bars, you can get to the other side. So we'll see if it can get up to that high uh, before it fails and tries to turn around. And finally, if we look at the Russell, the Russell now, as we talked about, this is the one that uh, went ballistic, 10% uh, move off the lows, no break, and still no break, right? An angle of ascent that's impossible to maintain. Uh, you will get a pullback. It's just a question of when. Uh, but as I was just saying, that pullback may be no deeper than this, for example. I mean, you may not even get back to these swing point highs. So in other words, you could just levitate up here, build out some sort of a large ABCD structure, right, like that, and then take off again. So that's the um, small caps. So 
strong everywhere. You know, people, you, you read people talking about, okay, you know, this is going to go wrong or that's going to go wrong. Folks, you got this kind of momentum. This momentum doesn't just go away, right? As a matter of fact, as I started the show there, I had the uh, shippers up. Let me pull them back up. I want to show you, you know, one of the things, if you go and you read my books, and I've got these books here. You can pop in. You can grab one or two if you want. Uh, this, this first one is, is kind of a money management beginner's guide. These two are the, the model, all right? The, this one lays out the model. This one expands upon it, and that's the neoclassical model. And if you read my books, you know, I talk about the probabilities associated with uh, sectors pull, right, and the general market pull. And when you have strength in the general market, so if the general market, and I'm going to pull over the uh, trading cube here, if you have, and, and actually I'm going to pull up the shippers right quick. So let me grab, I'll just grab one of these guys. I'll grab the, the craziest one first, uh, DCIX. So this one went totally ballistic today, up, uh, what is this, 154%. So let me, let me grab that cube now. So what do you have what do you have here? What are these? These are shippers. They're, they're inside the transports. What's happening on the transports? Bullish, just turned bullish here, still bearish on the longer term. What does that mean? They have room to run. These things have been beaten down. What's happening? Money is rotating to this. What are they doing as they do that? Well, they start with the railroads and they move to the jet, you know, the uh, airlines. Now they go to the most beaten down group out there, which is the shippers. Is something different on the shippers? No. No. What's different is the momentum came in. And, you know, sectors move. And it's not just one. I mean, there's absolutely no volume in this thing. 40,000, three, you know, 10, 15, 20. And then you get to the day. What do they do today? Oh, 4.7 million. Come on, folks. I mean, this is pure momentum. And what do they do at the very end of the day? And I don't have the intraday chart up here, but if I did, I bet you you had big profit taking right at the end after they jammed this thing all day long. And just flip through the list here. I don't, I don't care if you go to um, any of these that's on this list. They all did the same stupid stuff. They all push up. Uh, actually, this one's a different one. This is it just happened to be uh, up big today. But here's another one. Here's dry ships, right? One, this is like the poster child. They start pushing it, and they keep pushing it. And then what do they do? They go chase the other ones. These things, give them two, three weeks, they're going to be back down here where they started. It's momentum, pure momentum. And a lot of people trade these things. You know, I mean, my old friend uh, Rev Shark does this. That's what he does. He sits in front of a terminal all day long. He puts these things up, and he trades them all day long. And, uh, you know, you just go after the momentum stuff. Anything, you know, you get a screener in the first thing in the morning, you look at it, you see how fast things are moving or what groups are moving, and you go look for names in those groups, and then you just start banging away at them. And you trade them all day long, and then you get out. And that's what these folks do, and that's what's happening here. This is a sign of of, you know, a market that has pushed and the momentum is hot, right? These are hot markets right now. All right, let's, uh, let's go elsewhere. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a second here and pick up on a uh, viewer question first before I forget. It has to do with gold. And the question was is, you know, should we uh, be looking at gold? So I'm going to pull gold up first and then we'll go from there. The first thing I'm going to say about this is why, right? We, we have things that have already, we've, we've already been told that there are things out here that are winners and losers. And what I'm talking about is this huge rotational shifts, right, that had taken place. I can't quite get this all on the screen. Let me try to shrink it for you. Yeah, here we go. We had these huge rotational shifts that began to take place. This is off of... Um, Oh, who is this? I'm trying to think of the name. Bespoke, right? And, you know, this is like gives you a good feel for the rotation. Look at where the money went and where it came out of, right? You've got like small caps, 600, and it's the IJR, right? The, the Russells, 
All of these got big moves. Look at the the, the Qs, the, th the three Qs. You know, down. They're they're out of favor. Look at gold, five down, silver down, eight percent since the election. Yeah, you'll get a bounce, but why do you want to play like emerging markets or the brick? Why do you want to play in a spot or like Mexico? where we know that they've been declared in the doghouse, right? These are in the doghouse. Yeah, you can get a bounce, but that's all it's going to be is a bounce. It's, you know, it's going to take time to repair the damage now. So looking at gold, you know, you got, I guess we could pop in here. It looks to me like you got an ABCD structure to here. You got a bounce to there. You do another ABCD structure down. Looks to me like it's not quite done. Uh, on that time frame. If I pull the weekly over, uh, let's see what we got on the weekly. Let's see if we can get this drawn right. Um, here on the weekly, yeah, there's another ABCD structure here. And this one comes into this area, right? Gets a bounce. And now you're trying to fulfill. It's not quite done. Looks like it's attacking these swing point lows. And it looks to me like this is the bar it's going after is that low. So, you know, if you're going to do anything, you want to wait until there, and that's where you take a shot at it if you're going to. You, you let it test into there, you let it have less volume, and that's where you put your buy-in, and you buy it, and you get your first bounce. If you're playing this longer term, you don't buy that first move into this. You just let it bounce, and then you let it come back and test again, and if it tests on lighter volume, then you think about it, right? Then that's the spot. That's if you're not trying to, you know, do a quick trade, a bounce trade. This is going to take a few months. It's not going to, this is the weekly chart. It's going to take, it would be in next year at least, before this thing really gives you a, a serious buy if, in fact, it's going to turn bullish again. And that's because it's in the doghouse, and it's in the doghouse for a reason. Whatever the reason is, you don't even have to know what it is. I mean, we can speculate like everybody else does, but it doesn't matter. It just matters that it's in the doghouse. And once you're in the doghouse, you're going to stay there for a little while, and there's no sense in trying to trade it. As a matter of fact, I've been in gold for a long time. I traded some in and out. I didn't get out on this break, which is where I should have got out. Uh, didn't didn't really get out on that break. We ended up hedging when we got down here, made a nice run up, sold. Excuse me, we hedged up here, right, and then we sold it out, and then we stopped out. Actually, up here at 119, we hedged. Um, we had almost twice up into the top and then we took it out and that was because it was breaking down you, you have to be aware of what's moving and, and when it's moving and if you're on the wrong side of a trade and I'll be very honest I was on the wrong side of a trade with Trump I was long expected a rally <laughs> happened to be in the wrong things though big cap tech that didn't work you have to come out you gotta go. You gotta go get what's working. I've outlined what's working, and uh, matter of fact, if you pull this back over, you can see what's working. It's very easy to see what's working in the sectors, and then you just go inside those sectors if you want individual stocks. But they've all ran so far now. You gotta let them reset, and then you take the next shot at them. Uh, so that's gold. Uh, the rest of the question was. Uh, was it worth buying GDX? No, it, I, I would not mess with any of this right now. So if I look at GDX here, um, yeah, you got a little bounce going. You know, think about neoclassic, and, and I know the person that's writing this, they, you know the neoclassical stuff. Bullish, excuse me, bearish retest regen is right there. The overlap of these two bars is right there. This thing's going to bounce to right there, and it's going to come right back down. It's not the time to buy it. And I'm kind of surprised that uh, you're even thinking it, actually. Uh, it's not the time. I, it comes later, in my opinion. I could be totally wrong, but your odds are not on this trade. And the last question uh, related to this was uh, ABX. Same, same uh, thing, I suspect. Let's go look at it real quick. Uh, let me grab the gold stock charts, and let me pop in. ABX should be right here at the beginning, and it is. And ABX. Okay, so ABX is already coming into it. And so ABX is already into the bearish retest regenerate. Now this one looks like a, it's a little bit better than the rest, 
but still, you've got all your volume right here where it's coming into. Watch what it does tomorrow. See if it gets over it and stays over it. I suspect it probably won't. Uh, I suspect it's probably going to fail and then come back again. So, um, you know, maybe you get over it and then you come back. But you still, I mean, the other thing is just three black crows. I mean, that's on almost every one of these gold charts. That that's That's like the mark of death. Now... You know, over time, they'll find their way back up to this area up here, right? But um, it's just not worth playing. Don't play the hard stuff. Get the wind at your back. That's what qualified trend is all about. Wind at your back. Figure out what the trends are. Stay with those that are winners. Whether you're trading short or you're trading long, get the strongest, short the weakest. Market's probably going to have a shot tomorrow to get an over-under, get some sort of a reset started. If it gets over it, continues on. I showed those tests right at the beginning. That's what we'll be watching tomorrow. Have yourself a great one. Take care. I'll see you next time.